Julian, did and welcome to a brand new season, I guess we should call it uh, officially, although it's a brand new season of the Wickham Wanderers show, although there are a number of differences. Uh, one, we're on a Wednesday evening, it's very unusual. Uh, two, uh, my wingman Bob is not with us uh, currently, uh, due to uh, failing a late fitness test, get well soon Bob. And uh, the third main difference is that we're live from Adams Park, the home of Wickham Wanderers, for this pre-season friendly against uh, Leicester City tonight, which kicks off at the uh, slightly later time of 7.45. We'll be bringing you uh, live full match commentary uh, from Henry, uh, who's with us as well. And uh, we'll be chatting to him throughout this, uh, well, what was going to be half an hour now, sort of three quarters of an hour match build-up. Uh, you're very welcome. We'll be looking back uh, over the, uh, the summer activity, uh, some of the pre-season friendly, some of the comings and goings news-wise, comings and goings players-wise as well, and uh, all to build up to uh, what should be a fantastic game at Adams Park this evening between, as I say, Wickham Wanderers, uh, who uh, will be uh, have a number of trialists on the bench. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of start with uh, the team news for you, I guess, in goal number one, David, uh, number 13, actually, David Stockdale, uh, Jack Grimmer and Gareth McCleary. Uh, new signing, Sully Kai Kai, Adebayo Akin Fenwa, of course, who, uh, who very recently announced his uh, extra year, his last dance, as he called it. Uh, Jack Wakeley, who's only been um, announced as a new signing today, uh, former Chelsea player. Uh, Nick Freeman, uh, Jordan Obiter, uh, Jason McCarthy, uh, Josh Scowen, who returns to the club as well. Uh, another of the new signings is uh, Oliver Pendlebury uh, gets a go as well, who was originally brought in just for the B team. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's making his, uh, his debut tonight. Uh, very exciting to see uh, Jack Wakeley, who, as I say, has only really been confirmed today. On the bench, a very experienced bench, as we mentioned earlier, apart from the trialists. Uh, Joe, well, he might be an experienced trialist, you don't know. Uh, Joe Jacobson, Anthony Stewart, uh, Mr Wicker, Matt Bloomfield, Scott Kasket, Daryl Horgan, who, of course, has had a uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic international, <laughs> or fantastical, uh, if you put the two together, uh, experience for Ireland, including uh, his uh, debut goal. Anis Mametti and uh, Alex Samuel, friend of Wickham Sound, as I say, there are three trialists on the bench as well. Among the, uh, the names to look out for uh, from uh, Leicester City's lineup, Wesley Fofana had a very good season uh, last season. Jamie Vardy uh, starts, as you'd probably expect, Ricardo Pereira. And uh, they've got a very exciting uh, lineup, and um, their bench is. <laughs> Is, they've, they've, I'm just trying to count. There seems a lot, an awful lot of substitutes, but uh, uh, you get that from um, pre-season friendlies. Uh, you, can, you tend to lose count. Uh, I'm very glad I'm not commentating on, t- <laughs> on pre-season friendly because you, you see there seem to be so many substitutions, especially in the second half. But uh, uh, among their bench, uh, the very experienced Mark or Brighton, uh, Andy Woolmer is the referee for tonight's game. If you're interested, uh, this game uh, takes place as a uh, warm-up for. Uh, the season opener, which is on Saturday the 7th of August, which doesn't sound too far away. And uh, it's a home game against Accrington Stanley, the first in League One. Uh, loads of firsts this evening as well. It's the first time you might have heard uh, Robin Luke mentioning earlier, the first time a substantial number of fans have been inside Adams Park to watch a game since the 12th of December, so over eight months. And uh, there's a, uh, up to 5,000 in attendance this evening, 4,000 Wickham Wanderers supporters, and uh, they've sold out their allocation. The visitors, the FA Cup winners, uh, Leicester City, have brought uh, 1,000 uh, in the away end. Uh, many are currently in the car park. You might be able to hear um, uh, over to my left, uh, some of them already in, in full voice. The FA Cup is here as well. Uh, that was introduced to Rob earlier, uh, first time he'd uh, come across that. It would appear. Uh, also, on, as I say, so plenty to talk about on this evening's uh, programme. It, it doesn't seem that long ago, actually, that we last had a show. It was sort of mid-May uh, was the last Wickham Wanderers show. And then, of course, uh, the players. Uh, you might be able to hear the players coming out now. And so, uh, great to see them. Oh, being, <laughs> being less warmly welcomed by the away uh, travelling fans, as you'd expect. But quite a bit happening over the summer in terms of uh, arrivals. 19-year-old midfielder Ollie Pendlebury. Uh, who uh, makes his uh, debut start tonight. He was initially, as I say, linking up with the development squad, which is led by Sam Grace, who worked with Ollie previously at Reading. Uh, Josh Scowan returns to the club uh, 10 years after making his debut. He signed a two-year deal. Uh, Josh, of course, you might remember as a a very sort of marauding uh, midfielder. He progressed through the Chairboys Academy into the first team, making his EFL debut just two days before his 18th birthday. Uh, So uh, he uh, left Sunderland at the end of his contract and uh, great to get him back there are so many examples of uh, players returning to Adams Park that Gareth brought back and uh, fantastic to see Josh back uh, Sully Kai Kai who is also playing tonight he uh, an exciting attacker uh, aged just 25 which I guess is kind of like a peak you might say he came from Blackpool over the summer after helping them to promotion to the championship uh, Gareth Ainsworth the manager obviously really excited by his uh, arrival saying he's a fantastic talent exactly the type of player who'll get fans off their seats so uh, first chance to see him 
he, he may well be in the sort of the mould of Uchi, who uh, obviously left uh, to uh, to join Middlesbrough uh, over the summer, which um, you know comparatively he wasn't here at Adams Park for for a very long, but had a great impact in the Championship season and. Um, uh, really fantastic to get um, Sully in who's a former Crystal Palace youngster he made his Premier League debut in 2016 he enjoyed spells at Crawley Cambridge Shrewsbury Brentford Charlton and has also been on uh, on loan uh, for uh, a six month period in Holland with NEC Breda so uh, fantastic to uh, to get his um, sort of services and uh, looking forward to seeing Sully Kai Kai in action um, as I was saying in the, in the sort of build up to the programme uh, Gareth Ainsworth was saying after the warm-up game against Stevenage that he was someone who, uh, who, who's been uh, much um, wanted by a number of other League One players. Um, so uh, really good to uh, to get him in. And then the fourth summer signing, which until, until this evening was the, the latest one, and that's uh, goalkeeper uh, Adam Pushybeck, who um, has uh, arrived on a one-year deal. Uh, he is uh, just 21, so uh, a very young goalkeeper left Ipswich this summer. He's uh, recently spent, spent loan spells at Braintree, Concord Rangers and uh, latterly at Chesterfield. He spent 12 years at West Brom as well. He's uh, of Polish descent, uh, an England schoolboy cap uh, or two as well. He's represented Wales under-19 and under-21 level as well and worked alongside uh, Lee Harrison, who's currently out on the pitch at the moment, uh, the goalkeeping coach here at Wickham Wanderers. Uh, come as an extra goalkeeper as young Curtis Anderson spent the season on loan at uh, National League Southside Eastbourne Borough. Uh, he's there from the 1st of August officially and... Um, uh, really pleasing uh, for him to go and get some first team experience he came to Adams Park I'm sure you remember with an England under 17 World Cup medal and experience with Manchester City as well um, and um, it's been a, a real season of a real uh, close season of, of activity as well as mentioned uh, with uh, Uchi going to Middlesbrough an undisclosed fee uh, we mentioned in the build up as well Adebayaki and Fenwar agreeing his one year contract extension his last dance deal as he called it um, he's got a number of other things in the pipeline including uh, wrestling and uh, acting he's working on a documentary as well also we heard over the summer uh, the, uh, the the Derby debacle you might call it uh, Derby uh, who've uh, been having all sorts of financial issues and uh, had a fine but also uh, were tipped to have a points deduction which may have been applied to last season which could have meant that Wickham Wanderers who were only in the end got relegated by a point you remember uh, could have been back in the championship um, which would have seen uh, Derby relegated but uh, unfortunately it was ruled that the FL wouldn't be appealing and uh, we can remain in League One. Uh, well, they've been preparing. They've had a 1-0 victory over Steve. And they've also been playing um, against these uh, Southampton under-23s. And uh, they've also had some other behind-closed-doors games in preparation where the manager's been trying different formations, uh, trying different trialists, uh, trying, obviously, some of the, the new signings as well. Uh, just really checking for, for fitness. As I say, the 1-0 uh, victory over Stevenage was, was a good result, and it was, it was very hot. Uh, great to have a, a game up at the training ground as well. You might have heard and read that uh, the training ground's undergone a real uh, revamp as well, a uh, new pitch, other new facilities as well. Here at Adams Park as well, there's some, looking around the stadium, there's some fantastic uh, new developments. You'll see it, when you next come, there's a, a fantastic giant screen, which is very, very clear. Uh, there's the digital advertising boards, which you might not have seen um, unless you come to the ground uh, for one of the trial events, maybe. Uh, there's been sort of Wi-Fi and other technological improvements, new screens, new um, PA system as well, which you might be able to hear. Uh, some of the, <laughs> the, uh, the pre-match uh, rock music uh, kind of build up as well that you'd expect from a Wickham game uh, so generally really really exciting to um, to have the, the sort of calibre if you like of a, of a, of a pre-season game against the FA Cup finalists uh, Leicester City very exciting to, to bring you uh, full match commentary this evening from that game uh, it'll be fantastic to uh, be able to um, bring you that commentary uh, as Luke and Rob mentioned uh, there is um, a fireworks display uh, I think it'll be literally kind of over the back of us uh, straight after the game, uh, which will sound <laughs> won't, won't look much on the radio, but it should sound very, very good. And if you if you sort of live in the Adams Park area or or sort of Sands area, you should get to see that. Uh, you might have heard uh, Leicester City just running out now, um, starting their warm up. Um, so fantastic to see the FA Cup finalists on the pitch, Adams Park. Uh, we have been uh, doing their sort of uh, pre-match preparations for a little while, and uh, uh, also being handed uh, the, the first edition of the new programme, which this season is called Blueprint. Uh, fantastic to see that and that's been given out free to supporters uh, this uh, this evening 
uh, which is also uh, fantastic to see. We'll bring you live commentary uh, from the game this afternoon. Our commentary team, uh, match commentator to Henry Deacon, will be joined by Josh Parker. Uh, Henry, who's with us uh, this evening, thank you so much for, for, for joining us. It must be uh, really exciting for you to, to see, obviously, the FA Cup uh, holders, but also to see Wickham as well after the season they had in the Championship and, and, and really getting the chance to kind of, I guess, because in a way they should have a real advantage having played at a, at a higher level last season. Yeah, um, yeah, great, great to be here. Apologies, it's, uh, it's, it's great to be here, and, and as you say, it's an opportunity to see the FA Cup. The season is coming sooner rather than later. You're not going to come up against this caliber of team with one, but it does taste yourself. It, it really does taste yourself against high caliber opposition. No, it's fantastic to see the likes of Jamie Vardy and Fafana, who we touched on, have had you know fantastic seasons in the Premier League and, and obviously in the FA Cup final as well. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and these are what these pre season games are for, isn't it? For Premier League clubs to come down here and for clubs at League One, Championship level, they can see these big names. Obviously, Les will be back in Europe again next season, the Europa League, horrors of the FA Cup. I've seen an FA Cup coming into Adams Park this evening. So it's, it's, a, great, it's a great occasion for Wigan, but also for Leicester at this stage of their pre season programme. They're only two games in at the moment. So to get these big tests in quite early against a team that was in the championship last season objectives to get there again for them as well they'll think this is a very good test for the Premier League season two three weeks away themselves and obviously disappointed for the club to be relegated but I think as I say they'll, they'll be used to playing at a high level which would should stand them in really good stead going forward yeah and I think when you, when you go into a division like the championship and when you take that step up to somewhere we haven't been before more than anything I think you learn a lot of lessons straight away on the pitch off the pitch and so they've learnt then now okay ideally you want to stay in the championship and, and go again from there but they've been there before they know what it's all about and then I had to get out of this league as well it's going to be a very tough division there's some really good teams and some really good teams being put together as well so no no need to guarantee but there's some there's some good sides in there but they'll, they'll fancy themselves to be up there and thereabouts because teams that come down that should be the objective to come straight back up again I mean, obviously, Wickham finishing, and uh, obviously it was fantastic they finished not at the bottom of the table, but they were at the, bo- at the foot of the table for a long time last season, but still put in some fantastic displays and, and some real great stories for many of the players who, who featured for Gareth Ainsworth over that campaign. Exactly, and I think when, when you go up to a division you've never been before, there's always going to be a breakout star, and you're always going to learn as you go on. Six wins in the last three teams, a fantastic one. If only you could you know, pick that one, one or two wins up where perhaps you should have got, which you drew early on in the season, things things could have been different but I'm sure they would have learnt the lessons as we see some of the big Leicester City names uh, walk just down the tunnel in front of us here um, but yeah th- it was disappointing of course to go down as you say not bottom so always open the door in case things happened and things nearly did happen as we as we know but yeah they would have learnt a lot of things from, from last season and, and they'll be happy to go again this season with the hope that they can get back to that promised land and fans would have been disappointed to see Uchi go. He was a real, um, as I say, uh, like Gareth said about uh, Kai Kai, someone who really got fans off the off their seats. Scored a arguably goal of the season against Middlesbrough, who who obviously were quite quite impressed with what he did. Yeah, and I suppose that's the the disappointing element of last season because of obvious COVID reasons. You couldn't have fans in and behind closed doors football is is completely incomparable to football in front of supporters, in front of fans. So. Yeah, of course, when, when you've got players that really do thrive in front of a crowd, it's going to be those teams that are always going to be at the biggest disadvantage. I mean, you look at the teams like Liverpool in the Premier League, for example, last season, who play rock and roll football, as Jurgen Klopp likes to call it, and they struggled without the fans. So there's always going to be winners and losers out of that scenario, but that's been and gone, fingers crossed. And we go into this season with supporters there, um, hopefully throughout the duration of the season. There might be one or two restrictions along the way, possibly. But now the fans are here, you'll see those players that enjoy and thrive on that atmosphere and really come into their own. There's something really nice, isn't there, about a pre-season friendly, a midweek game. The weather, um, there is some blue sky, but it has chucked it down a couple of times. But it's nice, it's nice to be coming to a game when it's light as well. And um, Again, I guess it, it's one of those games, isn't it, where the score is not that important, really. Obviously, it'd be fantastic to see, to see a wicked win. But just to see some of these players uh, on show, and uh, again, feel, feeling a bit sorry for you with the number of substitutions later. But it's, <laughs> it, it, does, it does give the, the players a real good run out. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the state of my notebook at about <laughs> 70 minutes in tonight. Um, yeah, it's a lovely and deceptively nice evening because there are some grey clouds just behind us. Uh, but yeah, these, this is what pre is all about. Nice night in July. The fans are in, looking at both of their squads, of course. Um, everyone's dreaming that they're going to have a great season, aren't they? Everyone's an optimist at, at this time of the season and, and for good reason as well. So yeah, it's, as you say, the results... Not irrelevant, but it doesn't matter as much as it would do if there's points on the line or cut progress on the line. But you can, and I suppose for Wickham as well, they've got an opportunity here where people will be looking at this game with a few eyes. So if you are a player and it stands there, you can put yourself in that uh, in that, that shop window a little bit with a performance tonight. No, definitely a real opportunity to impress, both obviously for the new signings and also the trialists as well, uh, which again, if they... <laughs> You, you might not be able to identify them, but they might just be called trialist one or something. But uh, as you say, a real opportunity for, for someone to, to really sort of stand out against, you know, literally what is top class opposition. Exactly. And it's all about opportunities, isn't it? You don't often get the opportunity unless you're playing deep in the FA Cup, fourth, fifth round of an FA Cup or have a decent run in the League Cup. You don't often get the opportunities to play this calibre of player. Uh, this calibre of team, this calibre of club, you know, FA Cup winners, Premier League winners not long ago, Europa League again this year. Go out, express yourself, enjoy it. Of course, it's going to be a lot about shape, a lot about how you're going to play going into your season. But yeah, go out, enjoy yourself, and, and if you can, possibly put yourself in the shot window. I know that Gareth Faisal won't want me to say that, but every player instinctively will think, let's have a good game against these. And you mentioned Leicester's sort of pre-season preparations. I guess Brendan Rodgers will be looking for, for something slightly different to get out of the game and, and really to see you know, where his players are ahead of you know, what, what will be a challenging campaign with Europe as well. Well, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, as far as Leicester City is concerned. And you can see it in their uh, starting lineup. Obviously, a lot of players coming back from the European Championships and depending on where teams placed in that, they're coming back in fits and starts. And I imagine that's, that's tough for Brendan to control because... Once a year is over, you've got a very short window between that and the season starting. So I can imagine it's going to be a very much a stop-start pre-season. Sounds like they're gearing up perhaps towards their final couple of friendlies and the, the Community Shield. You can see that in the lineup tonight is a mixture of first-team players and, and those fringe players that could perhaps knock on Brendan Rodgers' door with a good performance tonight. So, yeah, it's an interesting one for them. It's a mix and match. I think perhaps as their games go on, you'll see close to their starting eleven because of the Euros. They just can't field it straight away. So what's impressed you most about uh, Leicester? And for perhaps people that don't know their team, uh, apart from perhaps Jamie Vardy, who should we be looking out for? Well, of course, you've got the usual suspects, haven't you? You've got the likes of Kaglos Yunchu, who's so solid at the back, isn't he, uh, for the Foxes. Same with Wesley Fofana. You've got Wilford Indeed. He's also always going to cause problems for Leicester City. But, of course, they've got one or two players, little fringe players, who have played minutes here and there, or just come in, that want to, to make their name held. Um, Rashid Gazelle will perhaps be one of them uh, for Leicester tonight. And I suppose these games are an opportunity for those players that are on the cusp of the first team to really put their name in the shop window. You know who are the players that will be first in Brendan Rodgers' mind. But if you're going to have a good pre-season, put in some good performances, you've got to ask the question of the manager at the end of the day. No, definitely. A fantastic opportunity for, for the, the visitors to, to make a good impression as well. Who's kind of really impressed you about um, uh, Wickham, especially in the last season, and, and who are you looking forward to seeing tonight? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Adi Barak and Fenno is the standout name. He is the, the draw attraction. You say the last darts for him. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing someone like a Josh Scoan coming in uh, to the football club over the summer, uh, see how he gets on. Um, and see. And I, think, I think when you get into a game like pre-season, just want to see how, how the shape is, how the team dynamic is. As you say, it's not so much about the result. It's more about the, p- the kind of performance that's put in tonight. Are there things you can take that are positives and take that in? Because they say the last pre-season game, you pretty much want to be ticking now. It's interesting, isn't it, that the four pre-season signings are, are even a guy who was confirmed today as, as among the starters and, and Gareth's gone with substitutes who are really, really experienced. Yeah, and, and of course, players that are confirmed today obviously would have been in the door uh, long before now, so they would have had their sessions with the manager, they would know what the shape is, so uh, that should be a concern. As I say, trialists as well, that's always exciting to see. Um, perhaps you'll see less minutes on them tonight compared to what you would have seen early on in pre-season because tonight will perhaps be a case of getting it as close to, to opening game ready as you possibly can. Um, but yeah, there's definite 
Uh, there's definitely some exciting signs to see. And, and again, opportunities to knock on the manager's door with a good performance here against a top-class Premier League outfit. I mean, we mentioned fitness a couple of times and it'll be something that, that you know, Gareth will be keen to assess tonight because, um, as we mentioned in the, the, the build-up, there's, there's seven games in August. Two, two in the Cup, one in the Papa John's against um, Villa under-21s and uh, we've got the Carabao Cup as well um, in just a couple of weeks' time. And, and League One and League Two is so ruthless, isn't it, as far as the calendar's concerned, especially when you add in the EFL trophy matches for sides. And again, and this is where the fringe players, they'll know this Cup game's coming up. I mean, you play so many games, it doesn't matter who you are in the modern game, you've got to rest and rotate your players as you can see fit. So, again, if you can Im impress tonight, you may not start the first league game, possibly, but going forward, you've got League Cup games, you've got EFL Trophy games, go and impress in those. It's, it's a long, hard season, especially in League One, because you're entering everything at the earliest opportunity you can. So, it, it's going to be very much a squad season, and... It, if you don't play well night, you miss out that opening game, your season's not over, not by a long stretch. And it must be strange for the players to kind of readjust again to playing League One opposition, although, you know, I guess they'll notice that, that how, how, how a divide it is, obviously from the step up to the Championship. Speaking to many of the players last season, they were saying, you know, you notice straight away the, the change of pace and the change of intensity in the games. But, you know, to open up against um, Accrington Stanley at home on the, the 7th of August, which is only, I think it's next Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, I know, it's amazing <laughs> think how quickly it's gone. When you say the 7th of August, it sounds like a long time ago, but I've just realised, a long time away, but I've just realised it's next Saturday. And, and those early games in the season, you know, that the pitches are in good condition and, and players are literally just raring to go. Exactly. And Accrington Stanley's a tough first test. They were very good last season. They haven't got the biggest budget in the league and they haven't got the greatest resources. But John Coleman always overachieves with that team. A very good side. Um, so that's not an easy first test. And perhaps they're the sort of games when you're going into a new division and perhaps when you've come down. Reality check's the wrong word, but you want to play the sort of team that's going to give you ask questions press questions give you problems and Accrington provide that test and if you're not at it against a team like Accrington you do get found out so I think for players I think you do adapt at, at different levels quite quickly it's a different brand of football um, but ultimately you've got to be your best uh, to get three points no matter what, what division you're in but I think it, it would probably take two or three games but you get kind of used to the, the kind of style you'll get in League One just to look at the opening fixtures, as we mentioned, there's the Carabao Cup away to Exeter, which is only three days uh, later after the, the season opener. Uh, there's Cheltenham away as well. I mean, two, uh, and then Wigan uh, away as well. That, that's quite a run of uh, away games, isn't it? And Wigan look very good this year. They brought in some very good signings, brought in some very good players. So there's some tricky openers. Cheltenham just come up, so they're going to have a little bit of momentum themselves. As I say, I, I really do think that this is perhaps the toughest league one I've seen in many, many a year because you've got teams like Ipswich, uh, you know, teams like Portsmouth, teams like Sunderland who are always going to be up there and thereabouts. And, you know, that's where you've got to be on it from the first game onwards because what you don't want to do is have, you know, that little bit of a hangover from the last year, have a slow August, slow September, a slow September and then drag behind those sorts of teams because they can push away and push away quickly because there's so many games in succession. So if you're listening to this, thinking, oh, that's all right, we won't be playing them for a while, will we? Uh, Sunderland away is on the 28th of August, and uh, Ipswich, who, um, uh, who've, uh, who've Henry mentioned, are uh, quite a threat as well. Uh, we've got them here uh, on the 4th of September. So I know there's the old adage, isn't it, you've got to play them, but you, you don't really want to be playing too, too tough at sides on the, on the early, uh, early openings of the season. But again, as we found last season, the, the, the games that Wickham are sort of fancy to, to struggle with and, and against the bigger sides, they do tend to raise their game as well. Yeah, and I think it's natural for a team to do that, isn't it? I think when, when you're the underdogs, you can relish off that tag. And I think perhaps this season it's going to be a little bit of the opposite. We can just coming down from the championship. Teams will see you as, as a scalp, especially the teams that just come up from League Two, and there's four of them as well. So I suppose there's a different kind of pressure this year compared to last year because I suppose from neutrals or outsiders, there's a little bit of expectation now on your shoulders. You're not that tier go up to the championship and don't expect much from. There's a different kind of pressure this year. And it'll be interesting to see those early games, how that, how that translates. I guess it's been a real education as well for the players to have been in the, in the second tier of English football for a season. There weren't too many, you know, you can probably count on, I guess, three fingers, where heavily beaten. So there, there were so many games where, you know, there was one or two goals in it. Exactly. And I think it shows that the actual gap between levels isn't as big as what it perhaps was uh, back in the day. And as I say, when you do go up that level, 
things you get away with perhaps at League One level, you just don't get away from the Championship. And it's those small margins that, that separate divisions. Well, we touched on it earlier on as well, but it's quite exciting now. You can really feel that the atmosphere building, and it's so great to have fans back in, in stadiums after you know more than eight months back here at Adams Park in those those test events before Christmas. And there is something really special about obviously the kickoff's been delayed because of the traffic, but it's something quite nice about seeing that people parking up and walking to the ground or getting stuck in traffic, which is something this area has not seen for a while. Yeah, I think it took me about 15 minutes um, from the town centre to get me into, into the ground tonight. Um, but it's actually nice to see that bit of chaos that comes to a match day. I mean, I was commentating from games behind closed doors last season. It just feels empty and, and nothing. But, I mean, with 15 minutes or so before kick-off, there's probably a fair few fans in, in the bars and concourses getting themselves ready for kick-off. And, yeah, it's actually nice to see a good little atmosphere. 5,000 expected in tonight. 1,000 from Leicester who've made their voices very well known <laughs> ahead of kick-off this evening. So it's nice to be able now at this side of the COVID, uh, the, you know, the COVID restrictions, we can enjoy a game with fans in the ground, with a bit of atmosphere. It feels like proper football again. It really is something that the, the owners are looking to promote as well. You probably saw coming in that the, the Chairboys Village, there was live music, there was food and drink, and, and fans just kind of milling about, and they're hoping that they'll stay you know, after the kickoff as well to have a real experience, especially, I guess, on a, on a Saturday as well, just to, to, to really create such a great atmosphere as well. Yeah, and football, isn't it? It's all about that day out if you're a supporter, don't you? Also, when you go away, you make a day of it, and, and why shouldn't it be the same when you're at home? Come here, perhaps, 1 o'clock for 3 o'clock kickoff. Enjoy the loud music, the entertainment, the food, getting in time for kickoff, and then enjoy yourself after the game. You know, football. Football should be a day out, whether it's home or away. You should be able to go out, enjoy yourself, have a bit of fun. And I think any incentive that can add to the the match day experience can only be welcomed. And something else which the club have, have moved to do recently is, uh, I guess, partly due to the pandemic, but also partly because of technology to, to make it cashless, which is it's quite, it's quite, I guess, an adjustment for, for fans which are, who are used to, you know, even just turning up on the day and paying at the turnstiles. I suppose the world is a different place. I think 18 months ago, I always had cash on me. Now it's, uh, it's a case that's always on my card. Now I've got that spare bit of change somewhere. So the world has changed. I think it's given, well, it had given everyone that chance to reassess and and I think football has had the opportunity to have the sort of reassessment that perhaps it needed a little bit. Um, let's say things in and around the venue, which perhaps over years across the board was ignored a little bit, had then been brought to the forefront, better facilities, cashless venues, making life easier for the supporters. So, again, anything that like, it can add to that match day experience can only be welcomed and make it cashless, add these little things here and there. It's going to bring more supporters in as well. And really nice for the club as well to be able to monitor, you know, what the fans are doing, what the fans want as well. There are improved screens in and around the bar areas and the, the hospitality as well. As you say, just to really um, enhance that match day experience and, and, and make coming to Adams Park a real, a real day out, as you say. Yeah, I don't, you don't want that sort of scenario where people walk up at, say, 10 to 3 with their ticket, come in, leave about 5 o'clock and go home again because it's not... It's, it's just not really that kind of day out you should have. So, as I say, if you've got things in and around the venue uh, that people will be able to enjoy, people can, you know, have some fun with, interact with, it's going to keep people longer. And for the club, it's going to have benefits, not just from the support base, obviously financially, because it'd be more income, secondary spend into the football club. So, yeah, any, anything that, that you can do there just adds to the match day experience. It brings new people in, especially the younger generation who... Of course, with the COVID restrictions over the large, I haven't seen as much football as perhaps we would have when we were younger. So it's all welcome, all welcome. Fantastic to have a great experience. And obviously it just really promotes, you know, the families coming down and enjoying the, the match day and getting closer to their, their idols. The Wickham Wanderers players just leaving the pitch now, uh, around 15 minutes to go into a kickoff. If you've just tuned in, uh, the kickoff has been delayed uh, for 15 minutes due to the, the traffic coming into the ground. Uh, Henry Deacon, uh, we're chatting with. He's our, our commentator this afternoon, uh, this evening, I should say. Still feels like this afternoon, doesn't it? Just about, yeah. <laughs> with the good weather. Uh, but uh, yeah, fantastic to be able to bring you this pre-season friendly Wickham Wanderers against Leicester City here at Wickham Sound this evening and uh, we'll be bringing you some post-match reaction as well we're looking forward to that game thoughts of Josh Parker throughout the game as well really exciting if you're a Wickham fan but I guess any club as well a great opportunity to get that first look at, at the new signings exactly and everybody everybody will look at signings obviously if you're in League One you're going to be looking at what Wickham can provide 
But I think it's, it's realistic to say that, of course, a lot of people be watching this and seeing how Leicester get on. FA Cup winners back in the Europa League again, of course, this season. They're a club that are on the up and up and up as, as time goes on. Of course, as you say, it's a bit of a mix of match 11 that Brendan Rodgers has put together. But... It'd be interesting to see how they get on. They drew 0-0 with Burton, of course, on, on Saturday. So, OK, results aren't the greatest source of motivation in pre-season. But, of course, you want to improve on results, especially when you don't win. So, yeah, they'd, they'd be interested on both sides. Of course, I think neutral look at Leicester. But, of course, uh, for Wickham, there's some exciting news on and off the pitch as well. Yeah, Sam Vokes has been introduced to the, the crowd, a fantastic uh, acquisition uh, once again, who from Stoke, of course, and has got Premier League experience. He's just, just greeting the supporters now. And it just shows the calibre of players that League One football clubs can attract these days. It's a far more... It's always been a professional league, but it can bring out a better calibre of player. I suppose when bigger clubs come down into those sorts of divisions, it does add to the type of players you can, you can bring into clubs across the league. So, yeah, big name signing. It's a statement signing. People will stand up and make notice of it. And, of course, you want to really, uh, when you've got a big signing, kick start very early with him, and you just never know. Really fantastic to have another international at the club as well. We mentioned Daryl Horgan, obviously, he's played for Ireland, and, and, um, and really brilliant to have, um, you know, those, those other, uh, to add to the roster of internationals. Yeah, and of course, when you're in League One, you've got that awkward position of you've got two men and you've got to postpone games. So there's also that adage to it as well. But when you've got players playing international football at the highest level, gets the best players, of course, in European Championship qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers, it only adds to the capable player you bring into the football club. So, yeah, I'm all for international players at this level. I think it adds to the quality, obviously adds to the squad. And that experience of those big games also comes in handy as well. I mean, he was tipped to come, and I think there's quite a, a few rumours. Fantastic that he's been introduced to the crowd, and you, you really felt a lift there from the, the supporters. who were so pleased to see someone who's played over 60 times for Wales, and, and as I say, really compliment the, the Wickham side. Yeah, no, exactly, and, uh, and that's exactly what you want, these big-name signings. And, we, and also what you want to do, make sure they come in. They would have been due diligence, make sure they're the right person, the right character, which he obviously will be coming into the football club. So, yeah, no, it's all... Uh, it's all good news. You can get that calibre of player in. It's, it's, it's fantastic news. No, Gareth's all about sort of the, the, the match of um, the, the character of the player and that they, they're a fit with the team and, and that they really kind of can kind of fit into to what he's trying to do to the club. And, and uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for the, for the youngsters as well to, to learn and, um, as I say, a real mixture of experience and youth on the side at the moment. Exactly. It's all OK I'm having the best level on paper, but if I don't get on or there's clicks in the dressing room, it's completely irrelevant, isn't it? So, yes, you want good players in, but make sure they're the right players as well for the football club. And, and I think that's an important thing. Make sure the due diligence is done. The due diligence is, is done correctly. And when you've got the player through the door, they work with the team. And that's just, that's just a perfect win-win tonight for everyone. That, uh, I, I can't sort of overemphasize enough. That's, that's given a real lift, doesn't it, to the evening to know that, you know, we, we announced a, a, another signing a little earlier on, but to have, you know, Sam Vokes just appear from the tunnel like that just before kickoff, and, and, and also to have such, uh, we touched on earlier, but to have such a great um, calibre of uh, an opponent as, as Leicester City, who won the FA Cup and, and had a, such a uh, strong Premier League season last season. Exactly. It just all adds to the buzz, doesn't it, before kickoff. I think naturally being the first big game back of a crowd there's going to be a nice atmosphere but new signing FA Cup champions there's not much not to like is there it's just a, it just really sets the scene and, and to have the, the, the football live on the radio this evening as well really exciting to, to be able to hear the, the coverage if you've not been able to make it down to Adams Park and uh, really sample the atmosphere hopefully we're bringing it to you uh, the ground started to, uh, to, to really well not fill up obviously but there's a, a capacity of up to, to 5,000 as we mentioned 4,000 Wickham fans there were still tickets available this afternoon but Leicester City have uh, uh, sold out their allocation of uh, 1,000 supporters uh, they're here in number they're here in, in strong voice and uh, you might have heard a little earlier on with uh, Rob and Link they brought the FA Cup as well uh, so Rob was, was pleased to, to, to be introduced to it although he didn't he didn't recognise it at first uh, Luke's joined us uh, who was uh, here a little earlier on from Drive Time we'll be chatting to him uh, just before kick-off as well but um, uh, Henry as I say you must be quite excited uh, as I am by the, the, the line-up and it's a real statement isn't it to, to put on these debutants straight away Exactly, and I think it shows a lot of trust from the manager as well that you, you come into the lineup, you come into the team, and you're in, the, you're in that starting lineup against against Leicester City. I know that we mentioned the point a fair bit, but they're Premier League. 
top four, top five every year. The last two years, FA Cup winners. You know, they, they ain't no mugs, are they? So they've got to be good enough to play against this caliber of opposition because you get found out against this sort of opposition if you're not if you're not at it. So they must be to, to be able to play against the quality of side that Leicester are. What were your thoughts on the, the Derby debacle? As it, as it was, it seemed so, it's such a long wait to find out what was going to happen, and you know, would, would Wickham get back into the into the championship because of uh, Derby's mismanagement of their accounts? Typical of the FA to leave it to the last minute, first and foremost. Um, it feels like a shade back to the 1980s, back when teams are relying on reprieves and, and all the rest of it. It was just a crazy set of circumstances, but. It just shows if you can finish the highest placed team in the relegation spots, if you can't stay up, you've always got that little glimmer of hope, haven't you, down the end of the line. Of course, you don't want to stay up through somebody else's misfortune, but if opportunities are there, opportunities are there to be taken. No, definitely. Uh, very, very, um, uh, well, I think pleasing in a way that, that we can, uh, can at least know, obviously, that they're in League One and that they've, they've got their kind of feet under the League One table, if that's a, an actual expression, and, and can focus on you know, the, the calibre of, of opponents that they'll be having throughout the season rather than thinking, oh, we might have another season struggling in the in the division. But um, Gareth was saying that, you know, he won't have another season where the first seven games in the Championship were a real kind of time to, to adjust, at least in League One now. That, you know, a lot of the opponents, as you say, there'll be some coming up from League Two and, and, uh, and other ones who've come down from the Championship at Wickham. But yeah, on the whole, it'll be teams who are familiar. And keeping the base of the squad helps as well because they're used to the division. Um, and, and, and I think, it is, as I say, it's... Get yourself off to the best possible start. OK, you can't win leagues in the first few weeks, but you can put yourself in a bad position if you don't get off to a good start. So if you can get yourself off to a good start, win some games, get some early momentum in, especially because it is so thick and fast in League One, it'd be, um, it just helps you steer towards that season because it is a long old poke. No, definitely. And, and obviously... It's, it's, obviously all fans want, want their teams to get off to a good start but as you say um, Accrington on, on, on the first game is, is going to be tough but it'll be a great opportunity for, to kind of, for the manager and, and supporters alike to see where the team will be at Exactly and I think as I say this is your reality check for the season starts try and get yourself to say from this point onwards you're now into season mode get yourself ready everything then lies on Accrington it's your first game of the series you want to go and impress put a statement out and as I say for the players tonight some that come in the second half and what have you make your statement bash the manager's door down say you cannot you cannot drop me you have to start me put me in that 11 against Accrington that's what that's what the players got to do tonight and something that the team struggled with last season is goals and, and that you do feel a lot more confident or not least with the, the signings that have been, been revealed but, but that will be something that won't be quite such an issue this season yeah, and, and, and as you say, when top goal score with six goals doesn't unfortunately survive in the championship, you, when you know where your, your area of problem is, that's when the manager then to go and solve it, and he solved that. And, and it's a sign of a good manager that he goes in straight away. I will get that player, that player that will score goals, that will fix the problem that you had before. And that's a sign of a good manager. You go in, you get your man, there's no missing about, no hysterics about it, you just get the job done, and then hope that that guy fires you the goals you need. You made a really good point actually earlier, saying that you know how Wickham have kept the base of their their squad. There, there's only really been Uchi who's who's departed, and I think there was a lot of concern among supporters that you know that there could be a few a few players leaving who you know perhaps would have impressed at uh, other Championship clubs. And understandably so, when teams go down, other clubs in that division do like to have a bit of a pick and mix with them, don't they? I say if you can keep the spine of a squad for a few years, get that team spirit there, so you're not having to first game of pre-season, you know, having to. I don't know, have to do team nights out to get Moel going and things like that. You're there day one. Everybody knows everyone. It's easy then, isn't it? Um, it's ideal for you then. Um, if you can keep the spine of the squad for a few years, in a league like this, which is so tough, and you've got some tough games, Tuesday night games, that little bit of team spirit, team Moel, will get you through those tough away games on Tuesday night in front of turgid pitches. You mentioned the team atmosphere. I think there's a really good um, sort of bond between obviously the current players, and I'm sure that the new players will settle in really well. I know recently, for example, um, that a lot of the players went to the hundred and uh, really enjoyed uh, a night out there at the cricket. So that, that's fantastic, and they've done other things, you know, in the previous season, including going to, to Rush, the trampoline park, uh, which sounds a bit strange, but really, really good sort of team building there as well. And Go Ape, I think they did for a bit as well. So really nice that they can have these. I know that the players have kind of nights out and Wickham together as well. Yeah, I wonder what who would be the best at go ape. I suppose that'd be. The, I think that's the big question to ask on that one. Uh, but and again, again, when you come into a changing room, there's already good spirit. The new lads can come in, settle in. 
Um, I'm going to the 100 on Friday. I'm off to um, the Aegeus Bowl on Friday to oh, watch the Southern Brave play. So I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, nice little night out of the cricket. I suppose that can only help a bit of team morale. A few sore heads probably in the morning. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, it, it's good to have that sort of morale. Because that's the sort of thing, isn't it? You look at the 100 and the, the fireworks and the, the real kind of atmosphere at those sort of games, and that's something that, you know, the, the hierarchy here will be looking to create on, on, a, on, a, on an evening out at Adams Park. Exactly. I don't think you'll get quite the music at corners quite like you do at the 100. But yeah, create that atmosphere. That's exactly what you want. I mean, there's a real feeling now, isn't it? The build-up towards kickoff, they'll be, they'll be coming out very, very soon. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hand over to you and, and um, enjoy the game. Right foot for goal, but the ball does go into the penalty here. Chance on goal. And it's in! Oh, yes. And it's who take the lead! They've had to deal with the Foxes' onslaught, and then at the other end, they took their one chance they got. They had to break the lines. They had to break down a stubborn Leicester City defence. But it is Wickham Wanderers who take the lead. For uh, our commentary team this evening, fantastic to get the, the coverage. Josh, obviously, so, as you say, so many positives to take from this game. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's just, I think even if it would have been a draw there would have been so many positives to take from the game but a win just is the extra cherry on top so I think all round the manager will be pleased um, there's not many many things that he can be frustrated about um, limited Leicester's chances created the better chance and probably the more chances so I don't think there can be any complaints uh, so many obviously it's a, it, was, it was two games of, of each half really but in the first half as well just seeing the likes of Gareth McCleary you know creating chances and, and, and really yeah, as you say really restricting the, a team who've you know got so many so much quality in their ranks yeah definitely and like I said when you play this level of, of opposition um, it just adds a little bit of extra fire in your belly really so that's why I think the boys probably dug in a little bit harder than their bo bodies probably wanted to but that's what's expected of you when you want to get promoted and as you highlighted, the real organisation was, was there to see in both halves. Yep, definitely. And, and that's because the manager's very uh, meticulous in his planning and um, takes it right back to the basics so players can understand it without it being complicated. And like a lot of managers try and fail at nowadays, trying to overcomplicate such a simple game. And great to see the, the new signings as well, making their debuts. And, and, and Josh Gowan, especially, who you highlighted, has, has, has had a particularly good game. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's that fine balance of um, experience and youth because Josh Gowan is by no means an old player but he's an experienced one um, he's played in a championship played a lot of games in a championship and he already knows the culture at Wickham so it's an extremely smart signing and great to see the likes of Jason McCarthy who did so well Joe Jacobson coming on and, and, and really showing their class as well and, and obviously you know, doing, doing what they've done and showing that they can do yeah, obviously people like Jace has been back two or three times. It's nice to see um, the manager has those loyalties and he allows the players to go away and spread their wings and they have that um, that affinity with a club where um, they always want to come back and they always want to be a part of it. It's really nice, isn't it? There are so many examples of, of players who have gone and, and come back as well. And, and as you say, that's a real great advert for the club, but also the, the, the other players as well. Yeah, it's, it's an all-round, like I said, it's a family environment. So even when you're not here, you feel like you're here. And tell us about yourself. You must be really looking forward to, to the new season and, uh, and getting going again. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's football like it's all most of us have ever known. So when you're when you're in it, sometimes it can become tiresome, and it's just like it's just like any other job. Some days where like you're tired and your body hurts, but then when you're away from it, you miss it and you don't want to be away from it again. Oh, I think Gareth's going to address the, the crowd. So perhaps listening to his, his comments, but yeah, no, fantastic. Cause, um, uh, we mentioned uh, Henry mentioned that it's obviously two teams that, that Leicester have played Burton and QPR teams you know well yep very well so um, I think it's it's just an all round um, it's good for the League One teams it's good for Leicester because it's a different type and level of opposition um, and a different style so I think it's smart from them also oh, let's listen on Gareth come on come the, the team the team. Welcome back, everybody, to Adams Park. Thank you for coming here. Uh, let's talk about the game. Um, Leicester City won the FA Cup a few months ago. One of the fantastic clubs in English football. I know pre-season isn't all about results, but this one um, will capture the imagination of a
Um, I want to say first thank you to Brendan Rogers and the Leicester team for agreeing to come down and play us. I mean, it's uh, fantastic to have a club like Leicester come to Wickham Wanderers and uh, and I think it shows how far this club has come. Um, and as the game, like you say, pre-season's pre-season and uh, if we got beat, I wouldn't be saying it's about the result and, and because we've won, I'm not saying it's about the result either. It's about no injuries, getting a few familiar faces, a few unfamiliar faces as well that you might see a lot more of and uh, definitely having you lot back has been superb tonight. So uh, I know Mr Keurig uh, is, is watching somewhere and I want to say a big thank you to, uh, to Rob, Missy and Pete, Andrew Howard as well for allowing me to, uh, to put in place what I want to put in place and uh, I've been told to tell you all that we're no longer Little Wickham, we now want to be contenders for, uh, for League One and uh, I'll do my best to get us back to the Championship so you can all see that because you missed it last year and you deserved it. Uh, we're still waiting for the thumbs up from the fireworks. Uh, a word, Gaffer, on Sam Vokes. Um, what a statement that is. What a signing unveiled on the pitch just before the game. Uh, this guy scored 11 goals for Wales, 64 caps. So many goals and appearances in the Premier League. Still only 31. Um, how pleased are you to bring Sam Vokes to Adams Park? Uh, I'm, I'm as pleased to bring Sam Vokes to Adams Park as Sam Vokes is pleased to be at Adams Park because he wants to be here as well. So it's going to be a fantastic relationship. We got we got strikers galore here, and I'm, I'm loving uh, I'm loving the way we're playing at the moment. But and again, another statement uh, of of Wickham Wanderers that we can bring the calibre of, of Sam to this place. But he joins. A, a fantastic bunch of players as well and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can achieve this season so now welcome Sam, hopefully it won't be the last one um, and like I say it's, uh, it's going to be excellent to see you all here next Saturday against Accrington Stanley, first game of the season, let's get off to a good start, come on. Let's have a young Wickham fan in the family stand. Ideally one wearing a Wickham shirt. Give us a wave, someone. I can't see. These two lights are too bright. We've got a birthday over here, right? Let's welcome this young chap onto the, uh, onto the pitch. We need a volunteer. Do you want to hop over? What's your name, buddy? William. And is it right? Is it your birthday today? It's tomorrow, but it's just a celebration. What a celebration. What better place to have a party, eh? Uh, did you enjoy the game tonight, William? Yes. And who's your favourite player? I can then Great shout. And what do you think of our manager? Do you think he's going to lead us to success this season? Yes. There we go, we love that. Uh, we're still waiting on the thumbs from the fireworks. Uh, William, a big job for you is we would like you, when we're ready, to count down from 10 and then launch the fireworks. Do you reckon you can do that for us? Yes. Great stuff. Um, we're going to call Gareth over just to come over and have a photo of William, if that's okay. I'm still waiting on the big thumbs up. That looks like a thumbs up to me from Andy, the fireworks man. Uh, let's just advise our substitutes. They may just want to keep clear of the dugout area. We don't want any more injuries before, um, before the game starts. If we can just get a photo gaffer with William. And then William, the microphone is all yours for the, uh, for the big countdown. All right then, William, these fireworks are Wi-Fi controlled, okay? Using the brand new Wi-Fi. So your job, I'm gonna get you, if that's okay, to count down from 10, everybody's gonna join in with you, and then press the button on my phone and the sky is going to light up, okay? Hopefully your parents are filming this, here we go. Right, can you start the big countdown for us from 10 all the way down to 1? Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go.
to Adam Spark this evening for uh, what has been a fantastic start to uh, the well, to kick off to the, the the season which obviously begins for Wickham Wanderers in earnest next Saturday 7th of August uh, against Accrington Stanley here at Adam Spark it's been a fantastic night great to see uh, Wickham Wanderers getting that 1-0 uh, result against Premier League high flyers and FA Cup winners uh, my thanks to uh, to Henry and to Josh as well uh, also to uh, to Luke and to Liam and to Rob as well for uh, making it all go so smoothly for us um, this evening. It's been fantastic to have the fireworks and the, you might actually hear the, the um, I don't even know what you call that. The fireworks. <laughs> the, sorry? Fireworks. Fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. there's all sorts yeah. of fireworks. Fireworks are a big fireworks. thing. Fireworks. It's really fantastic. To, it's been a great night, hasn't it? It really has. I mean, I mean, on the pitch, Wickham, I think, were great. They looked all together. They looked brilliant. Golden, you might say. Golden. Nicely done. Uh, off the pitch, having the fans back, having the Care Boys Village going. Just, you know, the, everything they've done to the to the stadium, the new LCD screen, which obviously were here last year, but no one saw them. Uh, the new screens, you know, it just feels like it's going to be a good season. Just the atmosphere has been brilliant. Just to see, you know, cars coming up. Obviously, the, the traffic not so good, uh, causing a bit of a delay delay to the kickoff, and, and Josh getting here a bit late as well. But it, it, it really kind of makes the atmosphere as well, doesn't it? To know there's a real kind of buzz about the place. Yeah, it really does. And I think, you know, it's something that we all said that we think we, we, we definitely know they missed last year. Uh, it was it was weird for everybody involved. But to have those fans back, and Gareth mentioned it a few minutes ago, and um, I hopefully we'll be able to talk to Gareth uh, before the end of the night. But it just just sounded good even just walking in the stadium uh, after I finished outside it just it just sounded like the place was rocking and so great to have the new signings announced as well obviously we had Jack Wakeley before kickoff but to have Sam Vokes introduced to the to the crowd which I guess was, was a really nice surprise but a, a lovely way to to sort of welcome in the, the new new season yeah it really does and um, it, you know even though we've got more than three trialists still Gareth said there's more so hopefully there is still more to come yes yeah, so there was a trialist and a trialist and there was a trialist. trialist. They were yeah. all, they were very similar, similar names. We noticed on there. It was great. Have you ever done anything with uh, fireworks on before? I don't think so. No, this no. is quite new for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit like gladiators or something. You expect them just to run out <laughs> through the number one or some sort of ACDC concert or something. It, it just can you smell burning? Okay. Yeah, don't worry. I think that's only the grass. <laughs> but you know, this is all the you know the Koo Higgs have been very much you know we want to we want to wake this rock. We want to be the same as what Gareth has been saying on and off the pitch all of last season and the season before. And I think they're doing a great job. No, that the whole kind of fan experience, the the um, the chair boys village, the, the shops open after the the game. You know, they're really encouraging um, the people to kind of stay stay around and. <laughs> And not get blown up. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, there was a few uh, substitutes for Wickham Wanderers that nearly got caught in the fireworks, but they're okay, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but it, is, it, it really adds to the experience, doesn't it? And the atmosphere as well. Yeah, it really does. And I think, you know, the Koo Heeks have, have had many things before Wickham Wanderers and, you know, they, they know what they're doing. Um, and, you know, when we've spoken to Pete and Rob, they've got a plan. Gareth has got a plan. And, you know, it's all on the same line. They, they are all... They're all singing off the, the same song sheet. And their passion really comes through as well. You, you hear them speak and, and they, they want really good things for the club. And, yeah. and you know, they're not like, you, you're more fireworks. You imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I want you're, this every night on drive time. I was going to say this. Can we get this lined up? <laughs> Just out the back of the studio. You can, yeah. You great. can arrange that. I mean, but yeah, you know, where are the, you know, managers and, and the board haven't, in some clubs, haven't worked together, I think. We saw it last season. We saw it when the Q Weeks first arrived. You know, they they all know what they want from the club. They want to be back in the championship. Gareth said it. You know, when he was talking a few moments ago, they want to be back for the for the fans who missed it last year. If you've just tuned in, this is what reporting a war zone is probably like as well. <laughs> it's very odd talking <laughs> and having fireworks going off. 
I quite like it. Though. I think again, we should see this more often. Should we talk to the board and see if we can get this in, in the uh, at Wickham Town? Should be great. Yeah, no, definitely. That'd be really good. Yeah. So um, fantastic to. This is a really nice way to kick off, the, as I say, the, the season and the, the good good feeling to be yeah. back in League One as well. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, I, even for the players, because it must have been odd for them, you know, it must have been weird not having anything. You know, Josh mentioned it while he was doing the commentary that you could hear everything. And we could hear it when we, you know, when we were speaking to Bob and, and watching back the games. You could hear PQ. Oh, hello. Uh, you could hear Pete Coo. <laughs> Ironically, you can't hear now. No, no, we've all gone slightly deaf now. Thank you for that. Um, you could hear Pete Coohig and Gareth shouting from the sides. And, uh, yeah, I've, I feel like I've been at a Coldplay concert. What is this? <laughs> weird. Um, thank you. Good night. There, thank you very much. That was, uh, that was very impressive. More of that, I think. Um, Henry, for you, you know, for commentating on, on games, having the fans back must be great. I'm glad the fireworks went off before because <laughs> I was struggling to see it now. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping it clears before the car, before I do even the car. No, um, no, it was a very p- impressive performance. You know the sort of quality you're going to get when you play a Premier League team. It's about matching it, and they did match it. Um, I wouldn't say less or off, they just did a different tack of pre season. But I think they say when you get to that final game of pre season, I mentioned before, Kicker, you want to be in that mode of you've got to be ready for that first game of the season. They look ready for that first game of the season. And play like that I know it's only pre-season and we mention it quite a lot but you'll be in there thereabouts won't you you know somewhere in the shouting at some point during the season I think we've seen it before with Wickham where especially last season the first few games it took a little while for them to get into it but if they're playing like that come you know Accrington Stanley I think we've got great hopes for the season going ahead exactly of course it'd be a different test next yeah. week Accrington probably want to put a few more men behind the ball yeah. that's not being disrespectful to top John Coleman at all I know he likes to try and play a little bit but the basis of his team is that's what he has to do sometimes so I think I'll say there'll be different tests this year because when you like Gareth said just there when you're the underdogs you've got a bit more freedom to play but when you are a team to be shot at a team that are fancy teams react to that differently and play differently against you so would that be possibly the one thing that may take a bit of adaptation possibly but there's players that are used to this level, know how to play at this level, and that's an equaliser, and that should get you off to, to a good start, probably. Accrington's a tough first test, I said uh, before kick-off. It, it's a real test of, realistically, where are you as a League One club? You get through that, set yourself up nicely. Every game's tough in this league. It's a tough league this season. But, yeah, you'll set yourself n- nicely if you win there. Very different types of opposition, though, that they'll face this season to, to last season. Obviously, as we, as we touched on in the beginning, it's they, they notice the step up and they notice the intensity and the pace. Uh, and uh, and it, it's not like they're going to have to ease off again this season. It's just a different challenge. It's a different challenge. There's going to be teams that will be a little bit more direct. The Championship is a much more technical league, although with the influx of bigger clubs into League One, it has got a bit more technical. Uh, but the challenge, by and large, won't be too much different. Um, at the end of the day, there was fine margins that unfortunately saw we can relegate from the championship. But you learn those lessons as time goes on and you get yourself off to a good start. You forget what happens last season. You build your momentum. Momentum's a massive thing. Get your momentum early because there's a lot of games coming up, thick and fast, as League One is. Um, and if you get yourself on the board, you get, I think, four wins out of seven is a good start, realistically. So if you can get yourself in that position and then build from that basis, everything's there for a good season. I think so many supporters will be really pleased to, 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 to with, with, as you say, uh, to come, come away from the old period with four wins, and especially buoyed by what they've seen tonight. Oh yeah, there should be plenty of positives to take from it. Um, like I say, I think they would have been happy first and foremost to have watched a football match. So first of all, fantastic to have people in football stadiums. It's something we'll never take for granted again. And hey, to to win, win and beat Premier League side, FA Cup champions cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake no fantastic and the, and the weather held as well which was which was really nice but what impressed you most because I guess obviously that as we touched on with Josh the, the organisation of the team the way that they defended the way they restricted Leicester's chances the way that they created their own chances as well it's, it can be so easy against a team like Leicester to say well let's just sit back put 10 men behind the ball because we expect them to have large swathes of possession which they did in times but no they decided you know what I don't care who you are we're going to go and play our game. You've got to beat us. We're going to impose our game on you. And that was what was impressive tonight. And that's what got on the Just Awards. Would you get the same Just Awards if you uh, you sit back 
contained when you got players like Vardy, Manatini and Acho? Probably not. So they went, they played their own game and they got the just awards because of it. And something else that really stood out, especially in the first half or the first game, you could almost call it, is you know, how so many debutants you obviously haven't played with a lot of these players before, but how they kind of really gelled as a team and fitted together well. I think when you play a team like Leicester, you're thrown into the deep end. So sometimes that actually helps because you've got to you've got to click straight away because if you don't click, say two defenders don't click, you've got Jamie Vardy in behind. You know how much he likes a long ball over the top. He gets past the two of you. That's it, 1-0. So, yeah, it's it, you've got to... I think when you get these sorts of games, you've got to learn to, to work together quickly, gel quickly, because if not, you get punished. And were Leicester disappointing? I don't think so, really. I mean, that, that, you know, they, there were some flashes of brilliance from... From um, I think Vardy and Fofana did some, some great stuff, and and your Thai friend, and um, <laughs> yep, <laughs> and, and, and 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 others as well who, who were you know obviously it's early in the early in their their preparations as you say, but they've got some big games to come as well. And they're at a different stage their preparations. Wickham are there, they're match ready, they're, they're first league game ready. Whereas let's say it's only less the second pre season game. They got more tests to come. They got Vidal to come as well, Community Shield to come. So they're very much still looking further along the track whereas Wickham can't and I say the Euros has obviously splintered a lot of preparations because players are coming back at different times depending on how they've done obviously at the championships the English boys will come back later like Sushinchi will come back earlier and then it's dealing with that and then later pre-season starts because other teams that they want to play being in a similar situation so yeah it is a case of just being in, in, in different phases of pre-season and Look, they're, they're a good enough side. They will come good in the end. It will just be a case of getting there eventually. And so much for fans to look forward to. We saw Sam Vokes introduced to the crowd. Um, supporters will be looking forward to seeing him in action. And we mentioned, you know, um, Josh Scown back as well. And people will be really excited to see what Sully Kakai can do. And and not just that, but kind of household names for, for Wickham as well. He'll be, he'll be, you know, hopefully just returning to where they left off. And they certainly showed up for the, for the supporters tonight. And that's what was great to see because... It's when you've got the fans there, you've got not a freedom to express yourself, but you're able to go and just be able to excite and entertain. And of course, you don't want to lose the ball or do things like that, but you do just have that extra little bit of freedom to go and enjoy yourself a little bit. And obviously in pre-season, it helps as well. Something which really stood out, I don't know if it was sort of widely spotted, but um, the, when the goalkeeper came on in the second half and he, he made that kind of slight error, dropped the ball, and David yeah. Stockdale was really cheering him on, which was really nice to see. Yes, yes, and uh, that's exactly it's, it's all the bad too in fun of football. And, and to be fair, the thousand that came down from Leicester tonight, they've been absolutely fantastic, haven't they? They've been, they've been great fun. And obviously, the Wickham fans have come and they've enjoyed their team go and win their, their first game back, shall we say, properly in front of fans because the last time was a bit. I think that's what. Yeah. I think that's what the whole club have been saying that this was this was the proper one back. It, yeah, it sounded great when you know when we had the one thousand and the two thousand fans, but you know five thousand you know makes a difference. Oh, it it God, yeah. sounded great, exactly, and and you can feed off of that. Whereas if you've got one thousand socially distanced people in three different stands, you can get little dribs and drabs, but it's not the same when you've got people converging together and uh, as it was tonight. No, definitely, it really kind of as you say really felt like a, a proper atmosphere again and, and I think it'll be quite quick for, for supporters to, to forget I mean people will be really careful obviously with, with safety and, and, and slightly cautious maybe but you know you, you can feel that, that an atmosphere will, will soon return yeah I suppose it's a weird one because legally you could have a full house in here but of course there's precautions and all the rest of it and I, I do not want to know what Covid officers safety officers are those sorts of meetings that they're having to have at the moment because I suppose it is a case of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yes, you can have a full house in here now, mm. but then you want to <laughs> cater that line and obviously we'll see how time goes on, how that works. I mean, the team was saying that, you know, that it was, we couldn't have any fans, we could have fans, we couldn't have fans, we could have fans. And, you know, the club have been so brilliant with, you know, keeping everyone up to date with, with what's going on, but it must be, you know, awful trying to organise because the news changes so quickly, it must be awful for them to try and just try and work out what they're going to do. I remember, I remember a situation, a previous football job of mine last season, where we, we were in tier two. We sold out tickets for a game on the Saturday. And then come the Friday afternoon, Boris Johnson makes an announcement and say that we're in tier four. Mm, so yeah. overnight, we've gone from having 2,000 fans in into nothing. And, and then you just got to try and keep people happy by changing things overnight. And it, it's... It, it's, it's an impossible task, an yeah. impossible position to be in. 
No, it really bodes well for the future, though, and, and quite exciting going forward to the, for the start of the se- new season. Thank you so much for, for uh, describing the action for us yes, this evening. You, it's brilliant to, brilliant to have you. you along, and thank you so much also to, to, to Josh. Yes, we're live from Adams Park. I'm down uh, pit side where we're chatting to uh, Gareth and Sam Vokes as well, the new signing very soon, who was revealed just before the kickoff. Uh, so they'll be coming out to uh, chat to us. But it really has been a fantastic night at Adams Park. And it's it sort of kicked off, as we say, um, with a real sense that the, the fans are back in the stadium. Um, a crowd up to 5,000 were here. Uh, Leicester supporters who, who brought a lot of noise. And the FA Cup as well, uh, which we've seen. Um, in and around the car park a little earlier on. Fantastic to see that the two, um, it really felt like two games in each half. Um, a lot of the new signings, uh, um, as I say, Sam Vokes was um, uh, brought out in front of the, the crowd just before kickoff, which was, which was a fantastic boost to, to get someone of that calibre. Uh, Jack Wakeley as well, uh, of course, was announced just before kickoff. Uh, kickoff delayed because of the traffic, but uh, a fantastic game and uh, brilliant to see in the second half. Uh, Wickham getting a goal and uh, really sort of showing up really really well against the the Premier League side yeah I think hello I'm up for once I'm taller than you it feels very nice um you know I think you know we've been saying a lot the atmosphere from last season was the big thing that everyone missed but having them back this this just for this game I think it's going to be a massive boost for the for the club and for and for the players themselves as well no, definitely, and it, it just feels like you know, a one-nil win over Leicester is, is a brilliant kickoff to the. Well, it's not really a kickoff to the season, obviously, because it hasn't started yet. But a brilliant um, pre-season. It's a warm-up. Yeah, it's a warm-up <laughs> to, the, to the season. It, it is, and it will give the players such a lift, I think, and, and and obviously the supporters as well, knowing that you know they can come back and, and watch the game and, and really enjoy uh, a great evening, and obviously Saturday afternoon's entertainment as well, and. Everything looks, you know, the, the, we, we commented before the game on how good the pitch looks, how good the big scoreboard looks, the digital display, the um, floodlights, which you saw flashing, but, but I missed that. I'm um, showing they weren't dancing. <laughs> the floodlights were dancing. Fly, fireworks and dancing floodlights would have been good. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's something to perhaps work on as well. So a really good atmosphere. I think everyone um, behind the scenes at the club must be so pleased with, with how it went and, and obviously the, the ideal uh, outcome as well. And it's a, a great chance to see the... The new signings and the the, the more more familiar players as well. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure you know wherever Pete and Rob are, are listening slash watching from uh, wherever wherever they are at the minute, you know it's, it would be a good boost to see that they they filled out Adams Park. You know it's going to be a massive. You know they know what they can do now. You know I'm, we, as we were just saying, we don't know what the restrictions are going to be uh, come come Saturday for the uh, the Accrington Stanley game. But you know even if we just have what we had tonight, that's going to be great. No, definitely, and it, it, it really was kind of that. There were so many kind of elements to the, the night which made it, you know, there's so much about Adams Park that the fans haven't seen, and also uh, the new kit as well, which I know you, you were especially pleased with. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of obviously last year's uh, home kit, but uh, the, the new golden kit for the away kit uh, and the training kit as well. And, you know, we say a lot about how Wickham is, is rooted in the community. We, we see it every game they're at home when they, you know, they walk around and they clap the fans, but. The fact that now they've got Wickham on their shirts in their training kits as well, I think that's a that is a really nice touch. No, definitely, and, and a really really nice thing for the, the fans to have as well, and a real connection I think with with the local area for uh, supporters and, and to see that on their on the shirts. And, and there's something quite nice in there about having a new a new kit or a new training kit and a new start to the season, and you know having new opposition, you know back in League One, but but a real boost having sort of built on what they did in the in the previous campaign in the Championship. Yeah, you know, and I think a lot of what they wanted for this season, they wanted in last season with the, the new Wi-Fi, the new sound system, the, the big screen, but, you know, they, they couldn't have it. They just gave them that extra bit more time to, to work on what they wanted to do at the stadium and, and get it ready for this season when they, when they knew, I think, back probably in the back of the head, that they were going to have fans for this season. And I think, you know, I think a lot of the fans will be impressed when they come down here and, and see what, what they have all collectively done and, and, and done together. And it must be great for the fans, uh, the players as well, uh, to be playing at a pitch now with LC, you know, screens that and make it looking like a, a proper a League One championship club. In a way, that's really added to it, isn't it? The anticipation of the supporters to, to be able to come here and, and to see, as you say, the facilities and also the team and new players as well. And, and playing in... in as Josh mentioned in the commentary, such a an organised way, and you know, creating chances going forward, and, and really limiting uh, Leicester's chances as well. And I think that's what that's what you want from a pre-season game. You want to see uh, your team take on the the top flights, top teams. Um, and FA Cup holders as well and, and to really give them a good game and it gives everyone a boost you know I know we say it's only a pre-season game but it, you know it matters because it gives them that boost to go ahead now and go in the season they've beaten the FA Cup winners you know I'm, I'm sure you know Leicester have got a lot to go on you know they've they had about a th- thousand substitutes warming up at one point uh, so you know for, for Wickham it is going to be that boost they need no definitely ideal uh, season
season preparations and, and as Josh and, and, and Henry touched on as well, Accrington uh, next going to be very different opponents. But the ideal preparation really to, to come up with uh, come up against players of the calibre of Jamie Vardy and James Madison and, and people like that as well a real kind of test and they must be really pleased with how they've how the, the Wiccan players have come out uh, on top in it yeah we were, you were saying to, to Josh earlier about you know playing in the championship last season would have given them uh, an insight into you know playing those those players and, and players that have played up in higher leagues as well um, so you know they, they know what they can do they know what they're going to be up against so you know go ahead and, and, and do it in this season no definitely and to see the, the combination I, I found as well was, was especially exciting of the, the established Wickham players but also mm. uh, some of the new signings and the debutants as well and, and it didn't they didn't feel out of place they seemed to, to fit so well in, in the team and, and so exciting to see you know them obviously trying to make a, a good impression on the night as well yeah and you know we've we've said it before where you know it's taken a Wickham a couple of games to get into it and, and get ready but they, they seem like they're ready for it they've had as we've mentioned they've been to the, the cricket they've been to rush trampolining um, you know they've, they've had those um, you know pre, pre-season get-togethers and, and get together and work out together and I think having those members from last season and I don't know, well for some people Bloomfield for a very long time uh, you know together they, they are all they all seem to be clicking really well and I don't think as well it's felt like too long since the end of the last no. campaign it was sort of like mid-May and then we have the Euros as well of course and and, and now it's literally on the eve of, of the new season the 7th of August which when you say it like that it sounds like quite a way off but when you realise that we're getting towards the end of yeah. end of July now and as I say such a busy um, busy schedule for August already like seven games in a month is, is a lot and you know they've got those two cup games in, in the different competitions and, and those games coming thick and fast with the likes of Ipswich and Sunderland and, 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 and other like tests as well against the likes of Cheltenham and, and um, uh, really exciting to, to have those those tests coming up and another real highlight of uh, the, the, the the night this evening was the, the introduction of uh, Sam Vokes b- before uh, the game I'm really pleased to say that um, he joins us now Sam uh, it's it, I don't know if you felt it but certainly in the crowd when, when you kind of revealed if it were it, it's such a such a great lift for, for all the fans yeah hopefully um, I felt it it was brilliant it was great to be part of um, and I can't wait to get going now um, watching the boys tonight is a great performance and uh, yeah like I say can't wait to get going because the manager was asked on the on the pitch after the game how excited he was to report you here, and he said just as, as excited as you are to be yeah. here, which which really shows you know both from the club's point of view, but also from from your you know yeah. wanting to be here as well. Oh no, of course, yeah, desperate to get going now. Um, first, I have a conversation with the gaffer a couple of weeks ago, and since I had that conversation, couldn't wait to get started, um, and it ended up dragging out a little bit, but I'm so happy to be here now. Um, can't wait for the start of the season now and, and, and looking forward to it and the crowd were brilliant here tonight and like I say the performance the boys put on showed showed our intent I think this year and, and what we're capable of that must be something that really impressed you the most the way the way they restricted Leicester mm. and, and the way that you know creating so many chances going forward and and defensively as well yeah of course and it's it's always hard to tell in pre-season games because you never know what you come up against or what you do but they put a strong out, team out tonight Leicester and I think we showed like I said, our intent and, and what we are capable of going forward this year, and and what what we want to we want to achieve. And it must be really exciting for you as well to sort of take on the, the challenge of, mm. of some of the teams. You know, we, we mentioned in August there's seven yeah. games and and they come thick and fast, and, and the likes yeah. of Sunderland and, and Ipswich, and, and obviously kicking off against that as well. Yeah, obviously, and it's uh, it's a strong league. It's a great league, and uh, starts next Saturday, and and the games do come thick and fast, like you say, and the challenges come up really quickly, and. Uh, I think coming into the squad I've been in for a couple of days now and the boys look ready um, and excited to go and I think that proved it tonight in front of our fans as well and, and hopefully they get to see the quality we've got and, and what we can do this year. That's especially exciting isn't it about pre-season is that you get you know the new signings coming and, and, and you think this is a real kind of beginning or something. Yeah of course and I feel that myself. Um, obviously some other lads that have joined as well but the, the experience the boys got last year in that, in that year in the championship um, obviously I saw them when we played a couple of times when I was at Stoke and you can see that belief and, and that true um, closeness they have as a squad and, and that really really reflects in the performances I think. I was going to say what, what was it like playing against with you? And, and, uh, what were your yeah. kind of impressions? Well I played the game down here and, and uh, we just thought we, we managed to win uh, towards the end but I really felt that um, it was the only game last year where we actually had fans in the crowd so it felt like mm. a buzz around and uh, I think it was only a thousand that night but it felt like it could have been 25-30 that night it, it felt that, that buzzing people were having back in the stand but it was... Um, now it was a close game and like I said it was it was it was a tough night and we felt that um it's given us from the group. I don't know, it's it's, it's a weird feeling to try, to try and explain, but 
I feel that now coming in as well and, and excited to be part of that. I was going to say it must be fantastic to, mm. to come into a group who are, who are really kind of growing but have had mm. that experience in the championship as well yeah. and you can bring your own um, t- uh, experience yeah. on that level as well. No, of course. Um, I want to bring the experience I've got but also um, um, can't wait to get going as well so a bit of excitement as well. I'm really looking forward to the challenge now coming in and uh, I think to be part of that group that, that have done well over the last couple of years and, and they can only grow as a group or we can only grow as a group I should say from the experience they had in the championship last year and, and so narrowly missed out on staying up but um, hopefully we can take that into this year I'm really looking forward to seeing you get, yeah. uh, getting amongst the goals this season as well thank you so much for your time brilliant to chat to you no worries thank you very much Cheers. thank you very much uh, Sam Vogue speaking to us here at Wickham Sound uh, unveiled to the crowd just before kick off on this pre-season friendly against Leicester a really fantastic uh, boost to the crowd to see uh, him here as well and uh, very exciting for the, for the season going forward yeah, it sounded great. I mean, you know, bringing in that, you know, professionalism from from playing for you know for Chelsea and and stuff like that's gonna that's gonna help as well for for things going forward. No, definitely, it's so exciting to get um, his thoughts on on the season, and you can tell he's kind of really raring to go as well. Yeah, no, definitely, and you know, it sounds like he's only been he's only been working for like the last couple of weeks, but he sounds like he's already in and, and ready to go. No, definitely, I'm really keen for the for the challenge and what this season brings and. It, it's obviously not that sort of undaunted, if you like, at the, at the prospect of some of the teams that are, that are coming. And he's had that championship experience, and as you said, really looking forward to, to being part of this side. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think you know, I think it's very interesting that how he said he felt like he was part of the team already, if it has only been two weeks. And I think that's what Wickham are very good at being. You know, where we've had previous signings before, where you know weeks in, they feel like they're part of the team and they're ready to go. And it's so. Um, crucial, I think, in any sort of team sport, but obviously to, to be able to fit into a group when you, you've just arrived and he was saying he'd spoken to the manager and, and had these talks and, and, you know, felt like this was sort of the place for him, if you like. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, credit to Gareth Ainsworth and, and, and his team as well for, for you know, not panicking. You know, he leads it always, every season. He, I think there was a, a statement from the club or he might have been talking to the club, you know, saying, don't worry, you know, I, we've got players who we want to talk to. Just, you know, let me do my thing. You know, I, I leave it till the last moment. And he does, and he, he gets the people that he wants. Because you can tell that like, the support is really impatient, and they want you know signing, 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 announce so and so. Yeah. And but you know, I think as well, Wickham fans do have confidence in the manager that he'll bring in you know his type of players. He said on the pitch just um, before the fireworks that was there fireworks. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I must have missed those, Colin. He was <laughs> he was saying that uh, you know that the owners are allowing him to do sort of what he wants, and yeah. you know he's obviously you know been here a long time, and is is really sort of you know putting his stamp on the team yeah and I you know I think if if the Kuhigs had, had come in and said no we're doing it our way I think that would have would have ended very quickly but you know as we've said many times they they all know what they're doing they all know what they want and I think you know Gareth has been here for so long now he knows how the club works he knows he knows the fans some of them probably you know he, he's talked spoke to most weeks um, so I think you know all together they, they know what they want and Gareth knows the people that he want as well going forward and I'm sure there's still as he said a couple more hopefully no, definitely. That's that's a, a real kind of carrot, isn't it, for yeah. the, the fans to know that you know there's likely to be more arrivals as well. Because well, three trialists tonight. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Who, who, who knows what might come of them? Who knows who they were or, or, or where they go now? <laughs> where they go. You know, this is the great thing about you know social media is it is now right. Get any photo of the trialists that we can find <laughs> and put it into Google, and it hopes it comes up with somebody. Yes, it's quite mysterious, isn't it? You're, yeah. You're not not really knowing who or, or what you know what will happen to them. They might be you know having a trial for someone else. You know, later this week. You know. Well, that's the thing, you know, with these trialists, and you know, they're they're playing for Wickham tonight. They could be playing for someone else, and uh, Gareth, you know, will get the ones hopefully that he wants to get, and and hope that they haven't signed up to anyone else. But you know, I think I think fans are, you know, they're used to how Gareth works. I think you know they they know who he wants. He'll get. No, definitely. And as Josh said in the commentary, it's a brilliant sort of shop window for for players to come and impress. You know, at this stage and on this on this stage at this level as well. And um, you know, even even before the seasons. You know, properly got underway, and and going up against the team against like Leicester, you say, oh, I, I can't one on trial for Wickham Wanderers, and I, I put in a fairly decent display up against some pretty decent opposition, and 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 like Josh said, you don't know who's here. You know, somebody from some yeah. another club might be watching as well, and a real opportunity to put your stamp on on what you can do in, in the season coming up. And it's a great name to have it by, you know, playing for Wickham. You know, we've spoken, well, you've spoken to many a ex player, Josh and I. You know, they they all come back, and they want to come back to the Wickham Wanderers because it's been such a highlight for their career and you know the the fans have been brilliant as well and the staff and and people that are off pitch as well you know it's a, as Josh mentioned it many times the community the family feel of the club um you know playing for Wickham is uh, is is a great thing 
because they want to be part of the story I think and, and yeah because you, you never know when something quite exciting is going to happen like you know you might get promotion to, the, to championship. the championship or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. or, or you might have a brilliant FA Cup run or yeah. another a League Cup run you need to get attacked by fireworks the, 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 you never know what's going to happen around every corner yeah, exactly. you literally don't know what's going to happen but no just sit on the ground now and it's I'm, I'm aware it's kind of a bit quiet but uh, you know what the only <laughs> thing they need to sort out and you know we, I, we can't really do anything about it it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit cold you've got a jacket why have you got your jacket on oh, I'm just it's going to rain I see but yeah, you know it's it, it's great you know they've they've had the new lights go in which I think they, they went in mid well not during a game obviously mm. during a week where there wasn't a game and you know having them you know they, they dance they can do the fireworks now uh, the, the new boarding screens you know not only does it make it look good but for uh, for the off pitch, the money coming in, they've got more ways to advertise now. No, definitely, all sorts of like, revenue streams, and I know that there's lots of kind of corporate event kind of side here, and you can, you can obviously hire out box, and they've got like, all sorts of experiences and conference type stuff, and a real kind of experience for for that kind of side of it, but also for um, supporters who who just want to, as you say, come along to the the Chat Boys Village, enjoy some live music, enjoy a drink yeah. and some food. Um, maybe see a Wickham Sound outside broadcast in the car park and <laughs> you never know what you're going to get you, don't, you really don't. You, don't you don't know what the weather's going to do no. you don't know there's so many you don't know in fact there really is uh, but you know for the smaller fan you know, for people I can say that having their first game let's minus Luke Cashman for that <laughs> uh, but it's a great place to come down and, and experience football because you're getting the you know, you're getting what you're sitting on the pitch, but you're, and that's to a high level, but the off pitch stuff as well, the, the bars, the Boys Village now, um, and, you know, Pete and Rob, have, they've got lots more plans for, for to do stuff, obviously, when COVID isn't around and, and limiting it, but, you know, I think it's a great place. And I can remember, you know, coming to Wimbledon as my first game, and I'm sure you can remember it as well. No, absolutely. And having that, that effect, I want to, you know. Wasn't there some sort of natural disaster in your first game? We can't talk about it. No, <laughs> it was against. Actually, was it Accrington? I think it was against. I can't remember. Um, but it was thunder, lightning, hail. Oh, similar to tonight, really. Similar to tonight. I, every time I come here, it, it gets jinxed. Oh, okay. Sadly. So, away. Yeah, I did apologise to Matt earlier. But he said he wanted, like, cloudy weather for the fireworks. Oh, okay, so that, I, that, I did my apology back. Yeah, I'd be more careful about it, uh, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it does seem like you might, you might take extreme weather with you. Yeah, we'll always take the weather with you in this <laughs> crowded house, wasn't it? People say it's global warming. No, it's actually Luke. It's actually me. No, exactly. But, you know, it's, you know, there's nothing they can do about the coldness. You get that every... It's every July, month. though. It is July. <laughs> yeah, that is a worrying thought, yeah. isn't it, that it's July. You're right, both I, I didn't realise. But, you know, they're... It just the stadium does look great. It really does. I mean, we weren't here or, oh, on fire. I think that's just the uh, fireworks. But you know, <laughs> I think you know we weren't here last, and it would be you know when Bob is and you get well soon, Bob. Mm. Uh, to see his thoughts on um, the yeah. ground or hear them and yeah, hear yeah. his thoughts as well. Yeah, it'd be nice to see his thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> bit weird. <laughs> um, but you know, it just the stadium looks great, and um, you know, hopefully we'll hear from Gareth, who I'm sure will be very happy. No, definitely, because you could tell from just when he was talking to the, to the crowd how easy it was to have the support back and, you know, the atmosphere that. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, we said it last season, that's what we missed. We missed it. You must have, you know, what the players, because they were, it's the 13th man, mm. you, know? And, you know, with the Leicester side, uh, some fruity, fruity language, apologies for that. <laughs> but, um, you know, quite sizest as well. Yeah, quite sizest, yeah. Um, they all feed off that, you know. It's what you expect from a, a football match, and you know, they all feed off that energy. Oh, definitely, and it, it makes you wonder with you know, without them, whether the score and whether the performance would have been. It was only one point. At the end of the day, it was only one point last season, and maybe with the fans there, that we could have had that one point. Yeah, no, definitely. That, yeah, there's all sorts of ifs and buts, ifs I guess. Buts, but, yeah. but fantastic to be, you know, approaching this this season yeah, full of actually yeah. after our warming up. In in um, for the, for the, a lot of that tonight. for the campaign in the, in the way that they have. Um, can we just ask if we can do some laps of the, of the pitch just to warm up. Can you think that would be allowed? I mean, just in the back of Gary, he's currently talking to Sky. So just ask me and Colin. Just <laughs> like, don't mind. Don't mind us. We're just very cold. Actually, you know, we've we've said a lot about the the players. Actually, for you know Matt and, and the media team for. You know, Will the chef who we spoke to Absolutely, last season? You know, hats off to them to for getting that. I know that Matt's been very stressed over the last couple of weeks, of but you know, hats off to him and the team for, for what they've done tonight because I can't imagine it's been easy. Oh, no, just to you know, even you know, comply with all the all the restrictions and, and make sure everyone's as safe as they can be. And 
but you know, to try and make on that hand, people will try and forget about that, and enjoy their their match experience, and get behind the team, and you know remember what it was like when you used to come to football and not have to worry about that, and, and cheer your team on, and, and see the likes of Jamie Vardy and James Madison and and Brendan Rodgers leading the side who uh, have done so well to, uh, to get the level that that they have. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, that uh, uh, Manager Gareth joins us now. It's great to see. Uh, it was it was evident from when you speak to that uh, how, how exciting it was to have fans back up more than eight months. Not as fuck. Yeah, and and honestly, the result uh, becomes secondary to, to seeing all those faces, seeing all those fans, people's families, people's generations, grandparents, parents, kids, great grandkids. You know, they all come to Wickham Wanderers. They're they're so welcome back here. The noise levels were something I haven't heard for for a year uh, and a year in the championship, which we really missed. But, um, that was brilliant, right? you know. A result irrelevant. I said that before the game, lose or draw. I just said that. I'm pleased we won. Of course I am. It shows we're, we're onto something good here. But um, the fans being there and seeing that uh, just made me smile and uh, making me smile again. Just thinking about those faces going on tonight to the street of Wickham, knowing that football's back. Our experience though, just approaching the ground and uh, it suddenly chucked it down. That wasn't good. <laughs> but, and my phone ring, but a bark. Uh, but it just felt so good. The, 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 the people, seeing people getting out of cars and walking yeah. to the ground, and and people just chatting about what they expect tonight and looking forward to seeing new signings. Yeah, and and do you know what? After a team that's been relegated, it it doesn't feel like the team that's been relegated. It feels like a team that probably has been promoted, you know, but we've been trying to get in this league for 20 years, you know, and, and we uh, we fit back into it. But uh, League One is definitely a good league for Wickham Wanderers. We're always known as this small little League Two club in the league in 92 and O'Neill and have pushed well and cup runs. And now I think we're a contender. I think we're this team that people think, do you know what? There's a feel-good factor about this place. We've got some good signings. I mean, announcing the signing of Sam Fox, you know, a player of that stature, probably the, the, the biggest name that's ever signed for this club, um, just shows where we've come. And, and everyone's played their part. Fans, staff, players, stewards, kit men, players, everyone has played their part to get the club thinking and, and rocking what it does. And, uh, and I'm, I'm a real proud manager and I always, always will be. And really exciting for, for fans to see, you know, first off, the, the players that you brought in um, over the summer and even what was announced today in Jack Way, just, just starting on, on the pitch in the, in the first half. Yeah, I mean, Jack from Chelsea, and, and again, people we probably couldn't attract in, in recent years, but with Rob Cook and, and the Cook family in the club, I mean, I'm stood there on the biggest scoreboard we, we, in, in... The scoreboard in, is very impressive. Yeah, in, in, it's in, I think it's in the AFL, never mind. In, uh, in, it's not as big as the Dallas Cowboys, I've been told, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll have to take their word for that. But, you know, the electronic advertising board you see around the pitch in the Premier League, we've got them now. We've got this club poised to, to, to be something special. It's up to me to sort the football side out because uh, the Keurig family are definitely something the off-the-field stuff and, uh, and they've got every right to be excited, every right to be buzzing and I'm telling them now, keep that, keep that feeling, keep that, that energy about you because that's what we're all about and uh, as I say, I wake up every day, I think I'm a very lucky man but I'll never take one day for granted at the helm of this club because uh, I'm loving it. What was it the beauty most overall about tonight? Like, because it seemed like you know the team was so organised that they restricted Leicester, they created chances, and you know, considering many haven't played together before, they, they seemed to kind of really gel. Yeah, and when you do say words like organised to me and and uh, and the gel and things like that, that, that means a lot because we work hard on the training ground to be organised. We work hard to be a hard working, organised together team. Um, you have moms and brilliance. And the likes of Mete and Horgan and Kai Kai and McLeary who who we've brought in and folks hopefully, you know, but you have these these players win games, these game winners, but we have to be organized and give them a solid platform to work from and uh, and so that they're huge compliments to you in uh, in any instance. But it really doesn't seem long until the season starts. So <laughs> you say August the 7th, and you think, oh, that's, that's a way away, yeah, but it's actually next Saturday. Next Saturday, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Atkinson Stanley at home, and, and they're coming down with the same feelings as we got. You know, they're, they're at the top of the league at, the, at some points last year. So they're going to be a, a very, very strong opponent. But as you say, um, we're not going to let this creep up on us. We know it's next Saturday. We're going to be working very hard now. That's our last pre-season game against any opposition we'll have a couple of games amongst ourselves but um 
we will now be focus on, focusing on, uh, on what it's going to take to uh, to be a team from Lancashire, which is uh, my home county, but for once I, uh, I need Buckingham to get the upper hand. I was going to say, Gareth, but you, we talked about the new stuff that's happened here at the pitch, uh, at the, the training grounds as well. Immense. It, it yeah. must be such it's so good to bring the team back and go, look at what we've well, got now. It, it, it matters, like I say, we're not, we're not uh, like I said to the fans after the game, we're not this little club anymore. I'm, I, I'll get told if I call Wickham Warriors this Rob little is club. just he's, behind he's you, just so be careful. So if I do, he hears me saying this, I'm, I'm a bit trouble you know so we can start getting a, a good uh, <laughs> insight here. but I, I signed Sully Kaka right um, we, we had to fight for another league one club for Sully Kaka um, Rob Curry wanted to back me on that one and, and went the extra mile to get me in and when Sully walked through the doors of the training ground his, his actual words were wow I didn't expect yeah. this and, and that for me shows that from the outside people probably still perceive this as this Wanderers Come in, come and have a look at the yeah. place. Come and see what we've got. Come and see the training pitches, the scoreboard, the pitches, the dressing rooms, the the facilities, the medical facilities, the the media uh, space we've got, and the the video analysis rooms and, and, and all that sort of stuff that we go into now. Um, for once, I'm saying this is a proper book club. And, it must uh, be great having the kick back in you as well, oh, because oh. you know we've been saying this for the last season as well that all seem to know what you want you, you're all singing from the same sheet you, you know what you want and you're you're getting it. couldn't i couldn't have asked for a better yeah. honest believe me and i'm not just saying that um because every manager wants to who wants to stay friends with honest i've got bob who who is just fanatically wants success for this club and, and wants this club to do well and and i've got pete who if we, we could have been the same person living in two different continents because the, the music the the, the upbringing both of Unbelievably the same and unbelievably close. Um, and, and Missy obviously keeping the gel between everything. You know, <laughs> she's probably the sensible one in the in the group. But it's um, it's fantastic ownership, it really is. And Andrew Howard being back again, getting behind the deals, he's very very big on the Sam Volks deal. And and this place is uh, is ready to go somewhere. And uh, and I'm lucky. I'm at the helm. I want to take it places. And uh, I've got the backing. I've got the players. I've got the fans, uh, just need the results now and, and we'll be giving everything we can to get them. Yeah, definitely. And what's your overall feeling going into the, the season now? You've, you've seen, like, kind of the, the as you say, the, the, the team coming together as you, as you like it. Yeah, do you know, pre-season, pre-season. I will still caveat that this interview with that. Um, we won't know until you make those tackles that really mean something. There's a win bonus, there's a league position, there's a, there's a, there's a huge pride thing on it. Um, Ask me after four or five games, but um, I'm quietly confident inside that we've got enough to compete. Um, there's some big spending teams in our league. There's teams that have been in the Premier League, about seven of them. Um, but there's also a team called Wickham Wanderers that were in the Championship last year, and we're not going to lie down. I'll tell you now, we're going for it this year. Pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so Thanks much. Thank you, Gareth. Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all the best. Uh, Gareth Ainsworth speaking to us here at Wickham Sound uh, after uh, tonight's uh, fantastic. It's, it's been great, I think. A, oh, a really it, brilliant experience. It really has, and I think, you know, Rob's here again and, and you know the fact that you know Rob was in America for most of last season Pete spent his whole time here mm. away from his family it shows how committed they are oh no definitely the hard work that goes on behind the scenes and obviously the, the kind of financial um, issues that the club faces and and just that it's it seems so this just feels such a, a kind of a real feeling of optimism uh, around the club yeah definitely and I think you know um, let's you know we'll, we'll walk and talk shall we um, you know I think <laughs> like they do on the programme like they do on the programme like we don't have to worry about any cameras in front of us it's <laughs> fine we can trip up and no one will see um, you know I think you know Gareth is extremely happy with with how tonight's going. You know, I know he's saying it's not about the about the results, but he'll be happy. You know, with how the how the team's played and 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 how you know the the people that we've seen over the last few seasons have you know are gelling. And you know, he said he was very happy to hear you say that. So well done to you, Colin. I said all the right things. Yeah, well done. <laughs> you'll be bad. You'll be allowed back. Oh, I hope so. Um, but you know, I think you know altogether. I think that's, that's a great start for Wickham. Uh, a close of our coverage, which started at four o'clock this afternoon with drive time live from outside in the car park. Yeah. Uh, which sounded very good. Thank uh, you. By the way, it got off to a bit of a shaky start. Yeah, we it? won't talk about Rob's <laughs> lack of knowledge of the FA Cup and other things that he missed. But it's fine. It's safe, yeah, and, and it's safe just not... I, I, either we should get him a book, shouldn't we, on like simple terms on <laughs> yeah, what the FA ask, Cup looks like. We should ask Matt if there's like a history of the Wickham Wanderers like football club in the shop. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah, we'll we get could that just send Rob. that to Rob. That would be and great. And then test him on it each Saturday. That'd oh, be that's a great idea. Yeah, turn the pub quiz on him. But, you know, I think... And then to do the Wickham Wonder show from here was quite exciting, um, obviously, without um, uh, Bob, unfortunately. Yes. But um, he'll be back soon, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, fantastic to, to, to take it on the road, if you like, and, and to be at this game where, you know, there was so much kind of 
um, anticipation with mm. the new signings and the new everything new at the ground and uh, having fans back as well it's very very exciting to be part of yeah I wish we could do it more if I'm yes. completely honest same time tomorrow uh, <laughs> maybe not, not tomorrow but yeah I mean I wish we could be here every week and doing it because the atmosphere and you know I think the fact that the fans haven't been here for a year is you know made it even more of a buzz yes. uh, here at the at Adams Park today and you know the story of last season has brought new people including our very own Luke Cashman uh, he's so got a shirt and everything I know exactly and this is from somebody that wasn't a massive fan of football has now brought you know Wickham Wanderers shirt has brought you know brought tickets to come and sit in the Frank Adams stand um, I think you know that shows what Wickham's all about it, you know that people are dedicated to come and join the story and they want to find out you know what it's like to, to be at a game and, and to see you know a lot of the names that have been talked about and they you know see their stories kind of in the flesh if you like yeah and I think everyone knows you know we, we said it lots last season that you know we, Wickham's a good club you know Gareth's been here for what, 11, 12 how many years now I've lost count certainly more than 10 C- certainly more than 10 and you know the fact that he's been here for 10 years and, mm. and more Bloomfield has been here for, since the turn of the century I, I think is when Bloomfield originally joined Wickham the turn of the century it's like prehistoric <laughs> he was here at the turn of the century he's been here for just ages just after the Edwardians um, but I think that just shows what Wickham's all about you no know? definitely that, you know they haven't got players running off to go and join another club they, they want to stay here and, and, and have the Wickham Wanderers journey Yes, talking of staying here, we might have to stay here if we, if we talk. I was going to say we probably should turn the up. lights on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, a big thank you to, to you and to Liam and to yes, Rob and, you, and to make it all happen. And it, it sounded very, very good. Thanks to Henry, of course, for talking us through the game yeah. and for Josh for joining us on the commentary. I don't think I'm missing anyone else. No, uh, and, and thank you to, of course, Matt and the, the team yeah, no, just for looking after us. Made really welcome. Um, and you know, get well soon, Bob. And we should also point out that our thoughts are with Phil and his family as well. Sure. Um, and you know, we we hope that Phil's back here very soon. But you know, I think uh, a great start for. No, definitely, and it's been really fantastic to be part of, and, and hopefully you've enjoyed listening. And uh, I think the Wicked Wonder Show uh, returns next Thursday from seven. It does, yes. Are you ready? Well, I think so. Good. <laughs> Lots got, to look forward to. Got a lot of content from tonight to use. Absolutely, yeah. yeah no, definitely. Uh, really great um, chatting to um, Sam folks as well. Uh, really nice to chat to him and to hear Gareth thoughts as well um, and coming up Colin. from 11 o'clock this evening uh, Alan's here with uh, Nice and Easy uh, a nice kind of musical end to our evening <laughs> we'll be writing the local news still by then but there we go thank you Colin thank you